Lemon Grove in 1930 was like many rural towns in Southern California. Mild winters made it an ideal place to grow lemons and oranges. The town grew up around the railroad tracks, which carried its citrus away to the rest of the country. The Sanka Brothers General Store served as the social center of the community. Mexican workers contributed to the growth of Lemon Grove's industries, working in the rock quarry, the packing house, and the citrus orchards. Lemon Grove's only elementary school enrolled almost 200 students. By 1930, the fact that nearly half of these students were of Mexican heritage was a threat to some residents. For these children, the decision to build a separate Mexican school marked the beginning of a dramatic episode they would remember all their lives. As secretary of the Lemon Grove Parent Teachers Association, I have been asked to approach the school board with the following request. Whereas we, the members of the Lemon Grove PTA, deem that an emergency has arisen at the Lemon Grove Grammar School, we request that the school board establish a separate school for the Mexican children of this district. We feel that such a school has become a necessity due to a severe situation of overcrowding in the present classrooms. Furthermore, the Mexican children are deficient in their knowledge of the English language, causing their classmates to learn at a much slower rate. A separate school would also improve the general situation of sanitation and morals in the school, which has been deteriorating. In the 1920s, separate Americanization schools were created in community after community in the Southwest, following the established practice of segregated schools for Native Americans, Asians, and Blacks. By the end of this decade, the majority of Mexican-American children attended segregated schools. Ahora sí sabemos cuándo piensan utilizarla para nuestros chamacos. Esto es un insulto, una humillación. ¿Pero por qué nos hacen esto después de tantos años? Yo no entiendo por qué quieren tratar a nuestros hijos diferente que los niños americanos. Todo eso lo empezaron unas señoras que viven allá por la Golden Avenue, que no quieren que sus hijos se anden codeando con los niños mexicanos. Además, no debemos olvidar que nosotros también pagamos impuestos. Claro. Nosotros también mantenemos la escuela. Y nuestros hijos deben ir a la escuela con los niños americanos. Así fue como Roberto aprendió a hablar el inglés. Mis hijos nacieron aquí, son ciudadanos. Eso lo hacen nomás para tapar las cosas. Nos están tratando así solo porque somos mexicanos. Y si nos dejamos, ya verán. En esa escuela todo va a ser de segunda. Ahí van a llevar los libros viejos, las mesas viejas. Y hasta las maestras viejas. <risa> Hi, I'm Andy Anderson. How can I help you? Are you on the Lemon Grove School Board? Yes, I'm chairman. Well, I understand that the Mexican community has filed suit against the school board. Yes, they have. And I can tell you that uh, we're really surprised by all this. We've appropriated money for a brand new school in their neighborhood. We thought they'd be just delighted with the new school, but they've all gone on strike. Well, was this strike action, as you're calling it, instigated by the Mexican consulate here in San Diego? Uh, no, I really can't say that. All the Mexicans refused to go to the new school. All but three. The father told us somebody threatened to burn his house down because he sent his kids to the school. Now, we've taken out $1,000 worth of insurance for him. You know, Lemon Grove seems so peaceful. How could this happen here? Now, uh, that's a good question. I think some troublemakers, maybe from Los Angeles, have gotten these Mexicans all fired up. This isn't like our Mexicans here. They wouldn't have done this on their own. Now, we think they're following orders from someone else. Now, maybe even a foreign organization based down in Mexico. Ladies and gentlemen, now this is the case of Roberto Alvarez versus the Lemon Grove School Board, consisting of E.L. Owen, Anna White, and Andy Anderson individually and Jerome Green, principal. Are you ready, counsel? 
Your Honor, Fred Noon for Roberto Alvarez, who is present in court. Thank you, Mr. Noon. Your Honor, Philip Smith, appearing for Lemon Grove School Board, present in court. Thank you, gentlemen. You may proceed. Raise your right hand, please. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. State your name. Andy Anderson. Be seated. Mr. Anderson, what is your occupation? I own a gas station in Lemon Grove. And how long have you lived in Lemon Grove? Eight years. Do you participate in the civic affairs of the community? Yes, sir. I'm presently fire chief and uh, chairman of the Lemon Grove School Board. Now, Mr. Anderson, would you please tell the court why the school board decided to create a new public school in Lemon Grove? Well, uh, there's a safety issue involved here. Right now, to get to school, the Mexicans have to cross Imperial Avenue and the railroad tracks, and it's dangerous for them. We've solved that problem by putting a new school right in their own neighborhood. Now, Mr. Anderson, you were also concerned with overcrowding, were you not? Yes, sir. We had a real emergency situation here. Uh, there's simply too many kids in that school. Why, the toilets were backing up on us last month. And Mr. Anderson, one final question. Once the Mexican students had learned English and had been Americanized, what then would the school board do with those students? Why, we'd bring them right back into regular school. Fast, you can say, lickety-split. Mr. Anderson, you testified that one of the reasons the school board created the new school on the west side of town was that it would be closer to the homes of the Mexican children. And therefore, they wouldn't have to cross to the east side of town to get to school. And you said this would be safer for them, isn't that correct? Yes. But isn't it true that some of the Mexican children live on the same side of the street as the regular public school, so they'll still be crossing that dangerous boulevard to go to the new Olive Street School? Well, yes, I guess that's true. And isn't it also true that uh, some white children live on the west side of town, uh, closer to the Olive Street School? Well, there may be a few. So uh, right now, some white children are risking their lives every day crossing that dangerous boulevard to get to school. Yes, sir. Mr. Anderson, you testified that once the pupils of Mexican parentage were Americanized, they'd be admitted back into the regular school. Are you aware of the fact that 95% of these students were born here in America? Well, I wouldn't know the exact figures. In fact, many of the students that you propose to segregate in the Olive Street School already speak English, isn't that correct? I really don't know the answer to that, Mr. Noon. Mr. Anderson, are you telling the court that you're prepared to send students to this Americanization school without even knowing whether or not they speak English? All rise. Be seated and come to order. Good afternoon, counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, I am ready with my ruling. Well, counsel, I understand that a few children can be separated if they require special instruction in order to improve their education. But to separate as a group all pupils of Mexican parentage, that can only be done by infringing on the laws of the state of California. These Mexican students are of the Caucasian race. Therefore, they are excluded from those state laws which allow the segregation of Negro, Oriental, and Indian children. Now, I don't blame the Mexican children for this segregation just because a few of them happen to be behind in their schoolwork. On the contrary, that's an argument in their favor. I believe that this separation denies the Mexican children of the daily presence of American children, which itself is so necessary for their learning of English. And I find, therefore, that the Lemon Grove School Board is without the power to establish and maintain a separate school solely for pupils of Mexican heritage. Such an action violates the rights of these students. The school board is therefore ordered to immediately admit the petitioner, Roberto Alvarez, and all 74 Mexican students back into the regular school building, where they are to receive instruction on an equal basis with all other students. <laughs> 